Eduardo, you accomplished to, while telling us your story, inspire us. Uh -huh. I, I really think you have. And so thank you for that. And so next up, uh, so now we know how to examine ourselves to see whether uh, we deserve what we want. So now after we've done this, how do we find an overall meaning and purpose uh, to our li in our lives? So for, for that, we have Robert. Fellow Toastmasters and guests, first of all, I want to take one quick second out of my, my time for my speech and say, Eduardo, that was, that was excellent. I, uh, I, I was thinking about what I was going to say, and then you got me enraptured in your speech, and now I'm not totally <laughs> <laughs> What am I supposed to say? But nonetheless, it's meaning and purpose. So, you know, I, 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 I thought about taking on this, this topic. When I thought about it, I said this is a little too ambitious for a five to seven minute Toastmaster speech. But nonetheless, I found a really great source. And I think this is a very important subject for us to, to, to ponder. And I just want to make clear before I start, though, that my intent here is not to, to leave you with some you know, some inspirational sort of way to go about finding your, your meaning and purpose or to tell you what the meaning and purpose of life is. I just want to introduce you to the subject in my five to seven minutes and hopefully stimulate interest because I think this is something that is, is absolutely critical to being human and that a lot of us don't take time out to do on a, on a, on a not even a daily basis, just in our lives because we're very busy. But nonetheless, like I said, I, I found a very good source of inspiration for this and it was a book called Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. And the book has been rated as one of the top ten most influential books in the United States, and it's it's just a, a, a inspiring, profound book. Not so much because Viktor Frankl was a renowned scientist, or I'm sorry, psychologist in Austria, but it was because his experience as an inmate in a Nazi concentration camp during World War II. And I think that what really drew me in is not just I mean, because he's he's brilliant in the way he explains things, and his experience is is really profound. But nonetheless, just to think of a man who was stripped of everything that he had, his, all his dignity, his pride, his, his family was taken from him. I mean, teeth are taken out of people's mouths just to, to get the gold that they had. I mean, they're stripped of everything. They're completely dehumanized. And at that point in time, I feel that he had the opportunity to really look deep down in the deepest recesses of his soul and really look at what it is to be human, what it is that drives you, what it is that makes you want to take that next step even though you know that you're just walking into you know a worse situation from what you what was probably the worst you could probably you could possibly be in but nonetheless so what I wanted to do is I was trying to think about the best way to, to describe what he talks about in the book and I saw to it that probably best fit if I read an excerpt or a passage from the book so you can understand where, what, what the book is about and I think this passage does a good job of encapsulating really the spirit of the book so to set up the scene there, like I said, he's been completely dehumanized, stripped of everything that, that makes us human. And he's already lost his family. He doesn't know their, their, their whereabouts or their well-being, but nonetheless, he's assuming the worst. They're moving all the prisoners from one camp to another camp several miles away, and they're walking over somewhat rugged terrain. So he starts off. We stumbled on in the darkness, over big stones and through large puddles, along the one road leading from the camp. The, comp the accompanying guards kept shouting at us and driving us with the butts of their rifles. Hiding his mouth behind his upturned collar, the man marching next to me whispered suddenly, If our wives could see us now, I do hope they're better off in the camps and don't know what is happening to us. That brought thoughts of my own wife to mind, and as we stumbled on for miles, nothing was said, but we both knew each of us was thinking of his wife. Occasionally, I looked at the sky where the stars were fading and the pink light of the morning was beginning to spread behind a dark bank of clouds. But my, my mind clung to my wife's image, imagining it with uncanny acuteness. I heard her answering me, saw her smile, her frank and encouraging look. Real or not, her look was then more luminous than the sun which was beginning to rise. A thought transfixed me. For the first time in my life, I saw the truth as, as it is set into song by so many poets proclaimed as the final wisdom by so many thinkers. The truth that love is the ultimate and the highest goal to which man can aspire. The salvation of man is through love and in love. I understood how a man who has nothing left in this world may still know bliss, feed only for a brief moment in the contemplation of his beloved. In a position of utter desolation, when man cannot express himself in positive action, when his only achievement may consist in enduring his sufferings in the right way, an honorable way, in such, a man, in such a position, man can, through loving contemplation of the image, 
he carries of his beloved achieve fulfillment. Now, I don't know about you, but that is extremely powerful scene to me. A man taking everything is stripped from him and taken from him. And the one thing, when he's digging down deep just to find anything, really something that can keep him to take that next step, to keep going, is the thought of love. And I know this alludes to romantic love, but in the book, if you read, he, he talks about love in, in, in different forms and varieties. Not just romantic love, but love for oneself, love for life, love for your family, love for your friends. And kind of how you build off of that when that's really at the, at the root and at the core. And that's really the point of this speech, is at our root and at our core, there's something that drives us. The problem is today that we're so busy in our lives, there's so much going on. Every day, every second of the day, we're just bombarded with so much information. Our, our schedules are increasingly busy, and we just don't have time to sit back and contemplate and think. What is it really that's deep at our core that drives us? What's our meaning and our purpose? And I, and I think that, again, this is so important because this is something that has been an argument from the beginning of time, since, you, since the beginning of humanity. And it really didn't become popularized in Western culture until the, the great philosopher Plato of ancient Greece said, the fundamental activity of human existence is the search for meaning in life. So that is really the fundamental basis of everything that we do. Every decision we make is based off of something, and I just think we need to take time out to contemplate that. So I encourage you to think about that. I also encourage you to look into Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl because it is a very profound book, and he does have a lot to say in it. And with that, I will, I will leave you off with one quote from the book, and it is that everything can be taken from a man except the last of the human freedoms. To choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. So I encourage you to take a positive attitude towards the book and to choose your way into digging into your what is the deeper meaning for you in your life. Thank you. I hand it back over to our Toastmaster. Thank you, Robert. Definitely food for thought. We'll probably be taking our boss at some time today. Um, to reflect on, to reflect on our, our purpose.